All right, we are doing section 1-4. I'm teaching this in my classroom. It's after school. Uh, I tried to record it um, earlier today in class, and it didn't record. So let's get on with it. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at the title of this little lesson, Solving Radical Equations. So radical means uh, roots, so square roots, cube roots, things like that. That's what we're going to deal with. So it's a little bit different than we've done before, but we have dealt with radicals. So it's just kind of today's kind of like a combination of things that we've done before. We've done radicals, we've solved for equations, we're just putting it all together is basically what we're doing right now. So let's take a look at example one. And all these problems say to solve. So it says solving radical equations, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to solve for whatever they ask you to solve for. All these are x, so we're going to solve for x. The first one is not a square root, but it's actually a cube root. So it's a cube root of 2x minus 4, and then put a minus 2, and then equals 0. I'm going to go through these pretty quick because it's 4 o'clock, and I want to get home. So you can always uh, watch it. Um, again, you can rewind it and do the steps with me, if, uh, and then pause it and then go back if you need to. All right, so first thing we're going to do is get rid of this minus 2. We want to get rid of that first. In class today, I said something like this. I said, if you had an equation like this, let's say you had something like that, um, you would know, you would look at this and know automatically what to do. You get rid of the 2 first. You don't get rid of the 3, you get rid of the 2. So you subtract a 2. Why? Because you always get rid of what's being added or subtracted to the x first. So in our problem over here, the 2 is being subtracted from this stuff, so that's what we're going to get rid of first. So we're going to add a 2 to both sides add a 2, and let's bring everything else down. All right, so we've got the cube root, 2x minus 4, and that's going to equal 2. It's just going to make it a lot easier for us if we do that. So now what we want to do is get rid of that cube root. We don't like the cube root. We've discussed this in the past. So we want to get rid of the cube root. The way to get rid of that cube root is to actually cube the thing. Okay, so we're cubing everything over here. So everything's under that cube root. So if we cube the left side, it gets rid of the cube root, and we're just going to be left with 2x minus 4. So whatever you do to the left side, you also do to the right side. So you cube the right side as well. So remember, this cube and this cube root cancel each other out. Now let me tell you something. When you cube something, or if you square something, or if you take something to a certain power on both sides, sometimes some weird stuff can happen with your answer. We'll look at that in the second example, but just remember that. When you square some, when you square both sides of an equation, or you cube both sides of an equation, or you take it to the fourth power on both sides of an equation, sometimes weird things happen to your answer. It doesn't mean that your answer looks weird, but sometimes that answer that you get actually doesn't work. So if I plugged it back into here, there's times, not all the time, but there are times when you plug the answer back into this, this will not work. Even though you did the algebra correctly, okay, even though you did all the math right, sometimes your answer doesn't work. We'll look at that in example two, but since I was thinking about it, I thought I'd throw that out there. So we got rid of the cube root, so let's write everything else down. And two cubed is eight. And now it's pretty simple. You just add four to both sides. Let's do that in our head. You add four to this, you get 12. Divide both sides by two, and you get six. Now, before you circle it, don't circle it right now. Now, I promise, we did everything right, okay? We did all the math right. We did the steps in the right order. But what we need to do is check to see if this really is our answer. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're going to plug it back in. I like to bring it up here so it's kind of even with this. So I'm going to plug in x equals 6 into x into our original problem. So I'm going to rewrite the original problem again. But instead of putting an x, I'm going to put what we got as an answer. So instead of 2x, I'm going to put 2 times 6, because that's what we got for our answer. And then finish off the rest of this. Let's extend that out a little bit more. And then let's finish this off. Put a minus 2. Remember, this minus 2 is not under the cube root, so make sure you put it outside of there. And let's see if this thing right here, all this stuff right here, actually equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a question mark over this. Because I want to see, I don't know right now until I do the math, but I want to see that if I want to see if this left side is actually equal to zero. So let's do the math. 
So it's the cube root of, let's do the math inside here, 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 4 is 8. And then put that minus 2. Now let's see if it's equal. I'm still going to put a question mark there. Let's see if it's actually equal to 0. So the cube root of 8 is just 2. And then minus 2, yeah, now I'm seeing it, right? So 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So that means 0 equals 0. It does check, so we're good. So now, since we checked it and it works, we can go ahead and circle this. All right? It's very, very important that you check these. On this one, we didn't really need to check it, and we could have circled it and got it right. But watch on this next problem. This next one, example two, it gets a little bit weird. So example two. And again, this problem says to solve. All right, so here it is. This time it's a square root, not a cube root. So it's x minus 1 inside the square root equals x minus 7. All right, let's take a look. What are we going to do? Well, we've got to get x by itself. Well, we've got an x over here on the left-hand side, and we've got an x over here on the right-hand side. But the biggest problem is the square root. I want to get rid of that square root first. So what am I going to do to that? It's kind of like we did on the first problem. Instead of, taking the, instead of cubing it, we square it because it's a square root, not a cube root. So the square and the square root will cancel each other out. But what you do on the left side, you have to do the right side. This is very important that you do this. Very important. That you put that in parentheses and you put a squared on the outside here because you're squaring the entire right side. So you've got to put the whole right side in a parentheses and you put a squared out here. Well, the square and the square root cancel each other out. So I've got x minus 1 equals, now what do you do when you square something? Don't just go x squared minus 7 squared. That's not how you do it. You have to multiply it by itself. So it's x minus 7 and x minus 7. We talked about that before. So there's really nothing new in this lesson. Again, like I said earlier, it's just combining everything into one problem. So I'm not going to deal with this x minus 1 just yet. We'll worry about that in a little bit. Let's go ahead and work this thing out. So this is a FOIL method. It's, parentheses, it's a binomial times a binomial, so we just FOIL it. So let's do that. So it's x squared. the first. The outside is negative 7x. We could do this in our head, but I'm, I'll just do the step for you. Then the inside is negative 7x. Then the last is negative 7 times negative 7, which is positive 49. Let's go ahead and just simplify this little bit right there. So I've got x squared. So it's negative 7 minus 7 is negative 14x and then plus 49. Now take a look at what we got here. Now at least we got rid of the square roots. Okay, we got rid of this, all that kind of stuff. So we need x on the same side, don't we? So I got a whole bunch of stuff over here on the right hand side. So let's move the x over here and let's move the minus 1 over here. We do that by subtracting an x and I subtract it from the thing that has the x. Don't subtract it from x squared because you can't subtract those. Don't subtract it from 49 because you can't subtract them. They're not like terms. You only subtract like terms. So you subtract it from the negative 14. Let's get rid of the 1, or the negative 1, the minus 1. So we get rid of that by adding a 1. What are you going to add it to? Not the x squared, not the x's. You're going to add it to the regular number right there, or the integer. If you want to be more mathematical about it. What happened here? That's 0, that's 0, so we have a 0 right there. And now, let's see what we get here. x squared minus 14x minus x. So it's negative 14 minus 1. There's a 1 in front of it, so that's negative 15x. And this is 49 plus 1, which is easy. That's plus 50. I don't know about you, but I kind of like the equals 0 over, oops, my goodness, what did I just do? Well, I'm trying to be fancy. Let's just write dag on equal sign there. So we put 0 equals it. This is the same thing. I don't know. If you're anything like me, just kind of like the x's over there on the left-hand side. So that's why I did that. Well, we're not finished because we've got to solve for x. But we do recognize this. This is quadratic. We've been solving these for the last few weeks. So let's solve this. If you look at it, um, you could, if you wanted to, use the quadratic formula. If that's your go-to, feel free to do it. It probably takes a little bit longer. But I look at this and I say, 
wait a minute, this can factor. So 5 times 10 is 50, and if I take negative 5 and negative 10 and add them together, I get negative 15. So this actually factors. If you wanted to use the quadratic formula, feel free. It'll work. I just think this might be a little bit easier in this particular situation. All right, so would we say negative 10, negative 5, right? Minus 10, minus 5. Let's double check. Negative 10 times negative 5 is positive 50. Negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15, which is this middle term right here. And then we're good to go. Now, these two things are being multiplied together. Again, something that we've talked about before. Say so they prepped you for all this. Okay, we've done all the stuff up to this point. So you set both of these equal to 0. So you set x minus 10 equal to 0, and you set x minus 5 equal to 0. Solve for x. x equals 10, because we added 10 to both sides. Add a 5 to both sides. x is 5. It looks like we're finished. It looks like we can circle both of these, and we can go on to the next problem. But you can't. You've got to check. Okay, You must, must check. I'll just put that right here. Because what did we do at the beginning? We squared both sides. Remember I said earlier, when you square both sides of an equation like this, then weird things happen. Okay, Weird things happen to your answer. And you got to check to see if it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my original problem. That would be x minus, square root of x minus 1 equals x minus 7. So that was my original problem. What I'm going to do I got two answers this time. I got to take both of these answers and put them in. Put them in one at a time. Don't put a 10 here and a 5 here, okay? Take the 10 and put it in for here and here, and let's see if it actually checks. Let's see if the left side equals the right side. So let's put a 10 in here. So this is the square root of 10 minus 1 equals 10 minus 7. Let's see if this works. Well, 10 minus 1 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. 10 minus 7, of course, is 3. Does 3 equal 3? Yep, last time I checked. So it works. So 10 actually works. So if I put 10 into my original problem, the left side does equal the right side, and that is a solution. Let's try 5. Let's put 5 in for this problem and see if it works. You'd think it would, right? We did all our math right, I promise. We did all this stuff right. But let's see what happens. I'm going to take that problem again, that x minus 1, or the square root of x minus 1, equals x minus 7. Let's plug 5 in for this and see if it works. Square root, 5 minus, I'll just write it so you know what we're doing, and then 5 minus 7. So what I did is I just took the 5 and I stuck it in for where x was going to be. 5 minus 1 is 4, the square root of uh, 4 is 2 equals 5 minus 7 is negative 2. Does 2 equal negative 2? And some of you are probably saying, well, I thought you had to put a plus or minus here. Well, you do. So technically, you get a positive 2 and a negative 2. So negative 2 does equal negative 2, but does positive 2 equal negative 2? No, it doesn't. 2 does not equal negative 2. That means that 5 is not a solution for this. All right, so that is not a solution. We give that a fancy name. We call that an extraneous solution. So that means we get one that works and one that doesn't. Or the one that doesn't is called extraneous. It just doesn't work, all right? Just in case you see that word somewhere. So really, the only answer is x equals 10. Do not put in x equals 5. Even though the negative part, the negative 2, does equal negative 2, but positive 2 does not equal a negative 2, both of those have to be true, and that can't happen. So there you go. So that's your answer. All right, let's do the third. This one's a little bit long. I'll warn you at the beginning. If you were in class today and you're watching this, I don't know why you're watching this, but if you are, maybe you wanted a little extra boost, then you know that this does go on for a little bit. But I say it goes on a kind of long, and it's true. It does go on for a while. But it's really not that difficult. There's nothing in here that you haven't seen before. Everything in here you've seen before. So that's the nice thing about this. So let's take a look at this problem. So it's the square root again, so no cube roots on this. So it's just square roots. Square root of 2x plus 3 minus another square root. This time we got a couple square roots. 
square root of x plus 2, and that is equal to 2. So we want to solve for x. Find out what value for x makes this thing work. Well, we got two square roots. What I would do, I'm just going to show you what I would do. I'm not going to really explain it. What I would do is get rid of this, not get rid of it, but move this minus square root of x plus 2 to the other side. It just works out a lot easier. So I'm going to take this, the 2x plus 3, under a square root, equals, how do I... How do I move this over to the right side? Well, it's a minus, so how do I get rid of it? I add it, so I just add it to the other side. So um, I'm just going to go 2 plus square root of x plus 2. Because that 2 was there originally, that's why that 2 is there. And this, all I did was just add it and put it over here. I didn't write it underneath of there, that's just too much hassle. So I added a square root of x plus 2, and I added a square root of x plus 2, and that's what I get there. Just like on the other problem, we have to get rid of that squared, and so we square it. But you've got to be really careful here. You've got to make sure that you square the whole entire right side. That's why I put it in parentheses. That was our first example. We did one like that. So you've got to make sure that you square that first parentheses. Actually, it wasn't the first example. It was the second example, the one we just finished doing. All right, so nothing, nothing really is new here. Okay, That might have been a little bit weird getting rid of this. But then we're going to square this stuff. Now look what happens here. Square a square root, it gets rid of it. I'm going to push this over to the left a little bit. Just to give myself some room here. Now, what do you do when you square something? When you square something, you have to multiply it by itself. So I'm going to take this thing in the parentheses, and I'm going to multiply it by itself. See, that's the one parentheses. If I square it, i got to multiply it by itself, just like this. All right, there we go. I'm not going to deal with this 2x plus 3 for a while, so I'm just going to keep writing it down. Don't leave it and say, well, I'll just write it at the end. No, just keep writing it down. It's not that big of a deal. Now what we're going to do, just like we did in the second example, we are going to do some FOIL method here. All right, so let's do some FOIL method. And let's, um, I just got a text, sorry. <laughs> I had to check it. Um, so let's uh, do some FOIL. So first, outside, inside, last. I'll even put the little lines here to show you. So 2 times 2, that's the easy part. That's 4. Now, that's the first. What about the outside? These two things right here on the outside. So if I multiply 2 by the square root of x plus 2, all I can do is just write it like that. Right? I can't combine them or do anything like that. Now, here's the inside. The inside is exactly the same thing. All right, so that was the inside. Now let's do the last, plus 2 times this. I'm sorry, the last. Oh, that was, that was the, um, hold on. Oh, goodness gracious. Oh. So forget what I just said. I'm sorry. There's the first. Here's the outside, here's the inside, here's the last. Sorry, that right there. So we got to multiply those together. At first, it looks like it's difficult because you got square root times square root. Well, how in the world do we do a square root times a square root? Well, we've talked about this before. This is not new. We've done this before in one of our lessons. I forget which one, but one of our lessons, we did this. If you, you don't even have to do any math on this right here. Okay, you could. You could say, oh, this is the square root of 9, square root of 9 is 3. Or you could look at it like this. This is the square root of 3. It's multiplied by itself, so it's the square root of 3 squared. We just talked about this a bunch of times. What's, what happens if I square a square root? It just gets rid of it, so I'm just left with a 3. Or you could look at it like, I'm just going to pick some crazy number, like 157, I don't know. All right, just picked a number out of the blue. Where I came up with that, I don't know. If I, were, if I was to ask you to multiply these together, you should be able to do it very, very simply. Okay, without even doing any math or arithmetic. Because when I take a square root times itself, what I'm basically doing is I'm going square root of 157 squared. So what am I left with? I'm just left with 157. Put it in your calculator, try it. Square root of 157 times the square root of 157. It's 157. So when you have a square root multiplied by itself, What's your answer? Your answer is just what's left inside of the square root. That's all it is. 
So let's go back to this. The reason I did this is because of this. The square root of x plus 2 times the square root of x plus 2. So if I multiply those together, what do I get? I just get x plus 2. That's it. It's as easy as that. A lot of people get confused with that. A lot of people think that would be a hard part of doing this problem. But that was kind of easy. All right, let's keep going. This 2x plus 3 is just still sitting there. Be patient. Let's add some like terms. Let's see what we have as far as like terms. we got a 4, keep going through, and we got a 2 sitting there by itself. Just regular integers just sitting there by itself. So 4 plus 2 is 6. I'll put a 6 there. So I'm done adding those together. There's no... Um, There's no x's. Let me see where I am on my steps here. I just want to see. Uh, oh, there I am. Yep, let's do this. Let's put a let's put a plus x. Okay, right there. So I'm done with that. Can't really add it to anything else, so I just stuck it there. Now, what about this? Two of these plus two of these. Let's go back to this. What if I had, like, let's pick a different letter. Let's pick a. What if I had 2a plus 2a? All right, two apples plus two apples. That's easy. That's pre-algebra stuff. Two apples plus two apples is four apples. So we just add, keep the term the same, or keep, yeah, keep the uh, variable the same, and we just add the coefficients. Right here, I've got two of these plus two of these. So how many do I have? I have four of these. It's just like this. Okay, except the a is not an a. It's a square root of x plus 2, but it works the same exact way. All right, enough of that. Let's do this. Um, I got a 6 over here and a 3 over here, so I want to get the I want to get these numbers, these integers on the same side. I want to get this x over here with this x, so let's do that. So I'm going to subtract an x, or sorry, let's do the 6 first. Subtract a 6, subtract a 6. Subtract an x, subtract an x. Let's see what I get. 2x minus x is x. 3 minus 6 is negative 3 equals, this added up to 0, and then what am I left with? 4 square root of x plus 2. Need some more room. Let's scoot this up. All right, let's keep going. What's the one thing you don't like about this? Well, it's the square root, definitely. I definitely don't want the square root. Now, some people would look at this and say, you know what I would do? I would divide both sides by 4 because it's being multiplied by 4. You could divide both sides by 4. But look, if you divide this by 4, man, it's just going to make it look ugly. It's going to make it look, you could do it. It would work, but it would just make it look really ugly. So I'm going to keep that 4 there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to square this right side. Now, it's very, very important that you put that in parentheses and put a squared here because we have to square the 4 as well. Okay, I got to do something to the whole entire side. So I square the whole entire side. That means if I square the whole entire right side, I got to square the whole entire left side. You got it. So let's do this. This is, again, one of those FOIL things. Okay, when I square something, I have to multiply it by, oops, it's not plus, it's minus. I have to multiply it by itself. So I put x minus 3, x minus 3 equals. Now, this is, you got to be careful. You got to square everything in here. So you have to square the 4. If I square 4, I get a 16. If I square the square root, what happens? The square and the square root cancel each other out, so I'm just left with an x plus 2. And that 16, since the 4 was being multiplied by this, the 16 is being multiplied by what's left over. So that's what we get. Let's keep going. Told you it was long. We still got a ways to go. So right here, you should recognize this. You foil it. Let's do that. So I've got x squared minus 3x minus 3x, which is minus 6x. That's the outside and the inside. And then the last two terms, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Let's distribute the 16 through here. That would be 16x plus 32. All right? It's getting better. We don't have any, well, we do have squared right there, but it's looking a little bit better. But what do I want to do? Let's get all the x's by themselves and all the regular numbers by themselves. So let's get rid of this minus 16x and then get rid of it over, or put it over here so we Minus 16x here, minus 16x here, because that'll be a 0. Let's get rid of the plus 32. So we subtract a 32, and we subtract a 32. Let's see what we get. Well, over here on the right side, what are we going to get? We're going to get a 0, because they all canceled out. They added up to 0, I should say. What do we get over here? We get x squared. Negative 6 minus 16 is negative 22x. 
positive 9 minus 32 is a positive, or sorry, it's a negative 23. All right, you can do the arithmetic there. Let's take a look at this. Let's scooch it up a little bit. So we still got to solve for x. Still got a ways to go. If you look at this, this actually factors. This factors pretty nice because uh, I could take 23 times 1 is 23, and if I had a negative 23 and a positive 1, I would get a negative 22. So that factor is nice. If you wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could. If you didn't recognize that this factors, okay, if you looked at it, you're like, man, I've never seen anything like that before, go ahead and use the quadratic formula if you want to. It'll work, all right? But this is the way it's a little bit easier. So x and x. What do we say? Negative 23 and positive 1. So negative 23 times 1 is negative 23. Then when you add them up, negative 23 plus 1, it's negative 22. That way you can tell it's factored. We're getting there, I promise. One more step, basically. Well, kind of two more steps. So we set them both equal to 0. And to tell you the truth, at this point, you should be able to just look at this and do this in your head. If you put x minus 23 equal to 0, what's x going to be? It's just going to be 23. All right. If you wanted to go from here to here, definitely. You should, at some point, be able to do that. And then same thing here. x plus 1 equals 0, so you subtract 1 from both sides. x is negative 1. We finally got our answer after all that work, but we can't be complacent. We can't just circle them and say we're done. Okay, You've got to check to see if both of these work. I'm telling you, sometimes both of them will work. Sometimes only one of them will work. Sometimes neither one of them will work. All right, So that's a possibility. If neither of them, if neither of them work, then you just write no solution. Both are extraneous. So um, you just have to be aware of that. So we're going to do a little check. And what was our original problem? I'm looking at my notes. This was our original problem. And we have to put it back into the original problem. And all that should equal 2 if these are both valid answers. So let's put, the, let's do the 23. We got that one first. Let's put it in for here. So the square root of 2 times 23 and then plus 3 minus square root of 23 plus 2. Let's see if this actually equals 2. So let's do this. 2 times 23 is 46. 46 plus 3 is 49. Ah, that works out nice. And then 23 plus 2 is 25. It's under a square root. Again, let's see. I don't know yet, OK? I don't know yet if this equals 2, but let's see if it does. The square root of 49 is 7, minus the square root of 25 is 5, and now that's a 2. 2 does equal 2, so that checks. We're good to go. So now I can go over here and circle x equals 23, but I'm kind of giving it away right here. Something happens with the negative 1. Remember I said something weird happens when you square both sides? So let's give this a shot. So again, what was our original problem? Since we can't see it anymore, I'll rewrite it. That's x plus 2. And that should all equal 2. Now let's take a negative 1 and put it in for the x. Let's see what happens. 2 times negative 1. And then you put it inside the square root. That's negative 1 plus 2. And let's see, put a big question mark right there. Let's see if that equals 2. So let's do the work inside of this. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, plus 3 is 1, minus, that's square root. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1, there's a 1. Does that equal 2? No, because 1 minus 1 is 0. Does 0 equal 2? Of course it doesn't. Put a little, whatever. <laughs> Screw that up. All right, there we go. So put a little slash through here. Zero and two do not equal each other. So this is an extraneous solution right here. So we are not going to include this. Do not circle negative one. If you circled both of them and you didn't check and you, and you did all the math right, you got 23 and negative one and you circled them both, I'm going to have to mark it wrong. I hate to do that, but this is not a possible solution. And by you circling it are telling me that it's a possible solution when it's not. All right. So that was pretty long, but I don't think any of the steps were all that difficult. 
easy for me to say because I'm the teacher, right? Yeah, I get it. All right, so here's your homework. Your homework is section, it's supposed to be an E right there. It's section 14, part 1, and it's pages 122, 123, and we are doing numbers 7 to 30. Nine. They're not all going to be this long, okay? And you're only doing the odds, by the way. For those that were in class on Monday, I gave a, uh, a lesson plan sheet, and it had that on there. I I'll tell you this, though, and I said this in class today. On the next two lessons, part two and part three, I said on the sheet, I put all, okay? But I changed my mind after I handed that out. Um, we're just going to do the odds. So for part two and part three, even though it says on the uh, sheet that I handed out to you, it says all, we're still only going to do the odds. All right. So that should be helpful. All right. Well, I hope that helps. I don't know if anybody actually watched this or not, but there you go. All right. We'll see you tomorrow.